Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. If it wasn't for Andrew's teachings, I would never be where I am today. I would never have victory. I would be living a life of defeat. It was Andrew's teaching that allowed me to develop that faith. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to another special edition of the Gospel Truth broadcast. Yesterday, I began to share that God has been speaking to me for probably close to six months, specifically from 2 Kings chapter 4, about this story of a widow woman who couldn't pay her debts. The creditors were going to come and take her sons to be slaves, and she came to Elisha asking for help. And I read the entire passage in verses 1 through 7 yesterday. Let me just go back and rehash a couple of things. The very first point that I was making is that she came to Elisha and asked him for help. And Elisha said in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 2, Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? And you know, we don't have the benefit of hearing the inflection of his voice. We can see what he said, but we don't have the inflection of his voice to know what he was really meaning. But I believe that what he was doing, he was redirecting this woman's uh, attention or faith back towards God and away from himself. In other words, he refused to be her source. And this is so important. God has really spoken to me through this, that as a minister, you know, I could meet the needs of, I don't know, 50 or 100 people if, if somebody was in desperate situation, but I can't meet the needs of millions of people that God has blessed me to be able to speak to over television. It's not my place to meet the needs of people. My place, my call and anointing is not to give you a fish, but to teach you how to fish. And so this is the main point that I made on my program yesterday, that Elisha refused to be this woman's source. Instead, he pointed her back to God and tried to get her to believe in God. And the benefit of this is so powerful because even if Elisha could have met the need of this woman temporarily, he couldn't be with her the rest of her life and take care of her, but God could. And so when she turned to the Lord and obeyed the instructions that the man of God gave her and operated in faith, God not only met the immediate need that she had, but then she was able to sell the extra oil and she and her children lived off of it apparently the rest of their lives. And see, this is the difference between just giving somebody a hand out or versus a hand up. And I know that these are phrases that we hear often, and they may be kind of like a cliche, but it's true. And you know, this same thing applies in our society today. There are many people that are struggling financially, and I could spend a lot of time talking about this, but I'm just saying that a lot of people are looking for a temporary fix. They are looking for somebody that will give them something right then. They aren't looking for a way out of poverty. They're just looking for somebody to subsidize them and keep them in poverty. And I'm telling you, this is what has happened. You know, in our political system in the United States, there is one party that just throws a lot of money at all of the poverty stuff, and yet it hadn't changed things. You know, if you were to go back to uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson when he declared war on poverty and issued in the Great Society, I don't have these figures in front of me right now, but I have heard the figures, and the poverty, the number of people, the percentage of people that were in poverty back in, I guess that would have been the 60s or early 70s, when Johnson declared war on poverty, the percentage of people that were in poverty then were much less than the percentage of people that are in poverty now. And it's not because the government hasn't thrown huge amounts of money at them, but it's this principle right here that they are looking to men. They limit themselves to government. They wait on people to support them. There are women that will actually get pregnant just so that they can get child support. And I've... It's, I don't, that's probably the wrong term, but they get paid so much money per child if they have a child and they're a single parent. And there are people who do that so that they can get money and indulge their lifestyle. And they maybe get some money from the government, but, but it is going to guarantee that you stay in poverty as long as you are looking at these government programs to support you. 
Now again, am I saying that we never help people that are in trouble? No, that's not what I'm saying. But just giving money to a poor person is not helping them. I know that there's many people that get upset, but see, I see this right here. This woman came and said, I'm in this desperate situation. My children are going to be taken as slaves. Help me. You know, if, if somebody came to me like that, and I said, well, here, you go believe God. I'm going to give you a word, and you do this, and God will prosper you. God will supernaturally help you. I'm not going to pull out my wallet and just pay for you. If I was to do that, I can guarantee you there's people watching this program right now who would criticize me. And yet I believe that that's the better way to deal with the problem. Man, that's awesome. God is your source. That's what I dealt with all yesterday on our program. I could go back and say that all over again today, but let me just say that people are limiting God by looking to their job as a source. Just one channel of God getting things to you. God can get finances to you and bless you in many, 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 many ways. You should not limit God supplied to you by a job. And when you get that attitude, you won't be intimidated by threats that they're going to fire you or demote you if you don't do certain things. You will do what God called you to do, knowing God is your source. And if that employer fires you, then God is your source. He'll have something better for you. It'll, it'll work out to your advantage. I've seen that happen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pe times with people who have put God first. So that's the very first thing that I pointed out. And then he instead, he turned her attention away from him meeting her need, and he says, what do you have in your hand? And this is one of the main things that God has been speaking to me. He's been saying, what do you have? And let me just tell you, part of the reason that this has ministered to me so much is because we're in the process of building all of these buildings up in Woodland Park. We've already spent millions of dollars, and we're doing this debt-free. And this is one of the main things that the Lord spoke to me. And, you know, instead of looking to people as being my source, instead of looking at the economy and the uncertainty that's in the economy and thinking, well, it's just hard to prosper. You know, look at the way things are going. The taxes have gone up. Obamacare has made everybody pay more. And, and instead of looking at these things in the natural and just thinking, you know, that, well, we're just going to have to live here, God was speaking to me and He says, what do you have in your hand? In other words, you've got a way to prosper. You've got a way to see all of this come to pass. And so I've been praying, and I've saying, God, what do I have in my hand? And one of the things I did, I went to my management staff, and I shared with them this passage of Scripture, and I said, God is telling me that we've got things that we can do that will generate response and income that we aren't taking advantage of. And the Lord just spoke to me that we've got to go back and reevaluate what do we have in our hands. And I could spend probably two or three days telling you the things that happened, but my management staff went out, prayed about this for a week, and came back. And they came back with things that I didn't even realize. My IT department came back and realized that we are paying megabucks. I mean hundreds of thousands of dollars to other people to write programs and to do things. And it's costing us a lot of money to sustain this ministry. I have hundreds of employees, and we are on, on television and radio stations. And because of it, it just takes a huge computing effort to keep up with everything. And we're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars. Our original uh, company that we went with, it took us $500,000 just to buy in to this service. And then we have a monthly maintenance fee that we pay. Well, one of the things that they came back with, we now have people on staff who graduated from MIT and who are able to write any program that we are paying other people service for. And actually, we can do it better because they're making a generic program that applies to, you know, just all kinds of businesses. We could tailor make one for ourselves. We could save hundreds, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe a million dollars or more if we were to bring this all back in-house. Plus, 
we could take these programs that we are writing specifically for ministries and start making them available to other ministries. I could name you two or three ministries that I know of right now that are with the exact same company that we are with, and it is functional, but one of them, uh, again, I'm not going to mention their names, but they were supposed to have a three or four month trans, uh, tr uh, what do you call that, transfer or transition into this thing, and it's taken them over a year, and it has been like pulling teeth. And even though it's working, because it is not geared specifically for their ministry, they're having to adapt, and it's a problem. We can take this, not only save ourselves money, but then we could start providing this service to other ministries, minister to them at a better level than we ever have, than they've ever been ministered to before, and it would be a revenue stream for us. I tell you, I'm excited about this. This could make the difference of anywhere from one to two million dollars over a, you know, a relatively short period of time of income right there, something that we have in our hand. They also came up, I could, like I said, spend a couple of days showing you all of these things, but we've got things. We've got healing testimonies that even though I play those on television every once in a while and they've ministered to people, they have a life that is far beyond what we've used. So we came up with an idea of how to use those in, we're going to go on secular television and do things and start reaching out to people. And I believe people are going to be born again, healed, delivered. It's going to make a huge difference. We had another idea come up about my books. And some of our books, you know, we advertise them for a brief period of time, but then after that, they just kind of sit there dormant. And some of the ideas where we've got all of this teaching available in books and we need to relaunch this. We've developed a social media thing where some of our posts have had over a million uh, views and just on and on and on. I could go on and on. And they came up with all of these things that we have that could increase ministry, touch people's lives, and ultimately would bless the ministry. So this is something that the Lord has been speaking to me, and we're still in the process. We're just now getting some of these things implemented. But for the last six months or so, I have been asking myself and my staff this exact same thing. What do we have that we aren't fully utilizing? And so I've personalized this. I've applied it to my ministry. But the reason that I'm making these television programs is because I'm seeing the benefit that this is having for me and for my ministry. And the Lord just spoke to me and He says, this is true of every single person who watches you on television. It's true of every one of your partners. Every single person has things in their hand that they just don't realize the potential. They're looking at the need, and the need is so big, they think, what do I have that could meet that need? But you know, you've got seeds. You can take an acorn, you know, and an acorn is small, and it doesn't look like much. But if you plant that, it turns into this huge oak tree. You can take a kernel of corn, and you can plant one kernel of corn. And from what I understand, I've never been really a farmer, but I've been told this by a man who was a farmer, that for every kernel of corn that you plant, it produces a stalk. And on that stalk, there will be three heads of corn. And I think that there's over 700 kernels on each ear. And so that would be three times, that'd be over 2,100 uh, kernels of corn for every one that you plant. And so if you were to take one kernel of corn, plant 700 different uh, kernels, you'd get these stalks with, I don't even know, I hadn't figured it out, but it would be millions and millions and millions. And yet some people see, just look at one little kernel and think, what is this? But it's plenty. You know, this exact same thing happened over in the sixth chapter of the book of Mark that Jesus told his disciples, he says, the people are hungry. And they said, well, where could we get enough money to feed all of these people? Immediately, they looked at their own resources. They just looked at, you know, in their wallets. And we don't have enough money. It would take over 200 days wage to buy enough food to feed this multitude. There was 5,000 men, not including the women and children, probably 10 to 15,000 people there. And they said, we can't do it. And so the Lord says, what do you have? Go and see. And they came back with one little boy's lunch. It had five small loaves and two fish. And they said, what is this among so many? 
YOU KNOW WHAT THEY DID? THEY LOOKED AT THE NEED. THEY WERE LOOKING AT THE MULTITUDE INSTEAD OF LOOKING AT WHAT THEY HAD. AND JESUS SAID, BRING IT TO ME. AND INSTEAD OF CURSING WHAT THEY HAD, WHICH IS IN EFFECT WHAT THEY WERE DOING, THEY WERE SAYING, THIS ISN'T ENOUGH. THIS WILL NEVER WORK. WE CAN'T MAKE IT. SEE, THIS IS WHAT WE DO ALL OF THE TIME. WE HAVE, uh, ALL OF US HAVE MONEY COME TO US. YOU HAVE TO HAVE MONEY. AND SOMEBODY, OH, NO, I DON'T HAVE ANY MONEY. YES, YOU DO. YOU HAVE MONEY OR YOU COULD, YOU COULDN'T BE WATCHING ME ON TELEVISION. YOU COULDN'T BE WATCHING ME ON A COMPUTER. YOU CAN'T LIVE WITHOUT MONEY. You, WE GOT MONEY. IT'S JUST THAT WE USUALLY HAVE MORE PLACES TO SPEND IT THAN WHAT WE HAVE MONEY. SO YOU DO HAVE MONEY COMING ACROSS YOUR PATH. AND OFTEN WHAT WE DO IS LOOK AT THE NEED OUT HERE AND WE SAY, WHAT I HAVE ISN'T ENOUGH, AND WE CURSE IT. THAT'S WHAT THESE DISCIPLES DID. THEY SAID, WHAT IS THIS AMONG SO MANY? BASICALLY, THEY CURSED IT, SAYING IT'S NOT ENOUGH. JESUS TOOK WHAT THEY HAD CURSED, AND INSTEAD OF CURSING IT, HE LOOKED UP TO HEAVEN AND HE BLESSED IT. HE BLESSED WHAT HE HAD. BOY, THIS IS, THIS IS HUGE. AGAIN, I COULD, I COULD MAKE AN ENTIRE SERIES OUT OF THIS. MATTER OF FACT, I HAVE. I HAVE ACTUALLY TAUGHT ON LUKE, uh, ON MARK CHAPTER 6 ABOUT LOOKING UP, WHAT THAT MEANS. IT ACTUALLY, WHEN IT SAYS THAT JESUS LIFTED UP HIS EYES TO HEAVEN AND BLESSED, THAT WORD LIFT UP THERE IS TALKING ABOUT, IT'S A COMPOUND WORD, ANA BLEPO. AND IT MEANS SIGHT. BLEPO MEANS SIGHT, BUT ANA IS uh, AGAIN OR TO RECEIVE. AND IT WAS TRANSLATED IN THE BOOK OF MARK WHERE JESUS LAID HIS HANDS UPON A MAN AND HE RECEIVED SIGHT AND HE SAW. AND SO IT'S TALKING ABOUT SEEING, BUT IT'S SEEN TWICE OR SEEN AGAIN. AND WHAT THE SIGNIFICANCE OF THIS IS, HE LOOKED PAST JUST THE PHYSICAL THINGS THAT HE HAD AND HE LOOKED PAST THIS TO GOD TO SEE WHAT GOD COULD DO WITH IT. WHEN IT SAYS HE LIFTED UP HIS EYES, THAT'S NOT TALKING ABOUT JUST, YOU KNOW, MOVING HIS HEAD. IT'S TALKING ABOUT THAT HE SAW PAST THE PHYSICAL AND THE LIMITATIONS THAT WERE ON HIM IN THE PHYSICAL, AND HE WAS LOOKING INTO THE SPIRITUAL AND SEEING THAT LITTLE IS MUCH WHEN GOD IS IN IT. AND BECAUSE OF IT, HE BLESSED IT, AND THAT LITTLE TINY BIT OF FOOD NOT ONLY FED THE TEN OR FIFTEEN THOUSAND PEOPLE THAT WERE THERE, BUT THEY TOOK UP THE FRAGMENTS THAT WERE LEFT OVER, AND THERE WAS MORE LEFT OVER THAN THEY HAD TO START WITH. AND THIS IS WHAT GOD HAS BEEN SAYING TO ME, AND I BELIEVE THAT THIS IS WHAT GOD IS SAYING TO YOU, THAT THERE ARE MANY OF YOU THAT ARE IN NEED, AND YOU ARE LOOKING MAYBE TO THE WRONG THING. SOME PEOPLE ARE LOOKING TO THE LOTTERY, AND LOOKING TO THE LOTTERY AS THEIR SOURCE. THERE'S SOME PEOPLE THAT ARE LOOKING TO THE GOVERNMENT AS THEIR SOURCE. THEY'RE LOOKING TO A JOB AS THEIR SOURCE. THEY'RE GOING TO A FRIEND OR TO A FAMILY MEMBER AND, and ASKING THEM FOR HELP. AND I'M TELLING YOU, GOD SHOULD BE YOUR SOURCE. AND SOME OF YOU THINK, BUT I DON'T HAVE ANYTHING. YOU DO HAVE SOMETHING. YOU NEED TO TAKE A PORTION OF WHAT YOU'RE GIVING OR WHAT YOU HAVE AND YOU NEED TO GIVE IT. GO BACK TO THIS ILLUSTRATION ABOUT A KERNEL OF CORN. YOU KNOW, IF YOU WERE HUNGRY, THE TEMPTATION WOULD BE TO EAT THAT ENTIRE uh, EAR OF CORN AND TRY AND SATISFY YOUR IMMEDIATE NEED. BUT LOOK AT IT THIS WAY. IF ALL YOU HAD WAS ONE EAR OF CORN, EATING THAT ENTIRE EAR OF CORN IS NOT GOING TO KEEP YOU FROM STARVING. IT MAY HELP. IT MAY SATISFY YOU FOR A BRIEF PERIOD OF TIME, BUT IT'S NOT GOING TO BE YOUR TOTAL SOURCE. AND IF THAT'S SO, WELL, THEN YOU OUGHT TO SAVE A FEW OF THOSE KERNELS AND GO PLANT THEM. AND SOMEBODY SAYS, PLANT THEM? MAN, IT COULD BE SEVEN MONTHS, EIGHT MONTHS, TEN MONTHS BEFORE I'M ABLE TO REAP A HARVEST. SEE, AGAIN, THAT'S SHORT-TERM THINKING, AND THAT'S ONE OF THE THINGS THAT I SEE IN THIS, THAT THIS WOMAN WAS JUST WANTING TO GET HER DEBT PAID, BUT GOD WAS WANTING TO GO FAR BEYOND HER DEBT TO DEAL WITH HER POVERTY FOR THE REST OF HER LIFE AND TO TAKE CARE OF HER. GOD ISN'T ABOUT JUST GIVING YOU ENOUGH TO GET YOU THROUGH THIS DAY. GOD WANTS YOU TO LIFT UP YOUR EYES, LOOK BEYOND JUST THE PHYSICAL, TEMPORARY THINGS THAT YOU'RE DEALING WITH, AND LOOK INTO THE FUTURE. HE'S WANTING TO PROVIDE FOR YOU, AND IF YOU DON'T GET OUT OF THIS SHORT-TERM THINKING, TRYING TO JUST GET OVER THE HUMP THAT YOU'RE IN RIGHT NOW, AND IF YOU DON'T START PLANNING FOR THE FUTURE, IF YOU EAT ALL OF THE KERNELS THAT ARE ON THAT EAR OF CORN, YOU'RE GOING TO BE HUNGRY AGAIN. BUT IF YOU COULD JUST TAKE A FEW OF THEM AND PLANT A FEW, LET'S SAY TAKE A DOZEN OF THOSE KERNELS AND PLANT THEM, DID YOU KNOW WHAT? IN SEVEN MONTHS OR TEN MONTHS, WHATEVER IT IS, YOU WOULD HAVE uh, a stalk 
with three ears on each stalk, with over 700 kernels on each ear. And man, you take a few of those and plant them, and within two or three cycles like this, you could be rolling in the dough. You could be selling your produce. You could be making it. But see, again, most people, they don't, they don't see what God has given them. God has anticipated every need that you will ever have. I can promise you that. You are not surprising God with your need. God has anticipated, and God has put something in your hand. Elisha said, what do you have in your hand? She says, well, I don't have anything but this little bit of oil. That's plenty if you, if you turn it over to God, if you let God bless it. And I can just hear some of you saying, but I just don't have hardly anything. You've got money. And you know what? If you would start planning a little bit of that money, if you would start giving, and I know some of you watching this program do, but I know that the vast majority of people watching this program do not give on a consistent, deliberate basis. And somebody says, how do you know that? because I've, I've read a lot of surveys, I've dealt with a lot of people, and I can just tell you, the statistics say that there's less than 20% of Christians who tithe or give on a regular basis. And I see that there's, all, there's less than 13% of my mailing list who give on a regular basis. And I know that's true of people watching this program. And I'm telling you that what you're doing, you're eating all of your seed God says that He gives seed to the sower. And yes, you have to eat, and so yes, you have to use a portion of it, but I am encouraging every one of you that God has put money in your hand, and you must, I mean must, take some of it and plant it. And if you don't, you're going to wind up just living from hand to mouth and never getting out of that cycle that you're in. You need to do what God was instructing this woman to do and quit cursing the little that she had and instead take a portion of it and start pouring it out. You need to start giving. And as you give, then it multiplies. Whatever you keep, it will not multiply. But the portion that you give, it multiplies. It never leaves your life. It just enters into your future where it grows and multiplies and comes back to you on every wave. Welcome to the AWA Minute, a small glimpse on how the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College are changing lives around the world, lives like J.J. Brazelton. In 2009, when the housing market crashed, J.J. lost her job, home, and marriage, leaving her homeless. It was through the free teachings of Andrew Womack that her life began to turn around. I had no money. I ran into Andrew Womack, who was on TV, and it was free and I started ordering his material for free. I was so excited to be told finally the truth and who I was by my Heavenly Father, by my Creator. Today, JJ has gone from homelessness to building millions of dollars of homes. Thank you, partners, for helping us provide free teachings to people like JJ so they can live the abundant life God has already provided for them. To watch JJ's full financial breakthrough, visit awmi.net today. Find out how God can take what you already have in your hand and turn it into His provision for your life by getting Andrew's complete teaching titled, What's in Your Hand? It's available as a special resource that includes the teaching on both CD and DVD. This unique product is available for a gift of any amount. This entire teaching is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. I'd like to encourage you to get this little DVD that we have on what's in your hand. I promise you, this is a powerful truth. Every one of you have things that if you put it in God's hand, it would transform your life. It would supply your needs. So this is a great little teaching. I encourage you to get it. You will be blessed. You can study through the entire Bible with Andrew when you get his continually updated living commentary. This extraordinary resource contains his personal study notes, footnotes, and commentary on over 25,000 Bible verses. Andrew has priced this valuable study tool at only $120. Go to awmi.net to download yours today. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website 
at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or you can call our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open Monday through Friday, 24 hours a day, and Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. In the month of October, Andrew will be hosting live stream events to Zimbabwe and Uganda. Next, Andrew will be speaking in Colorado Springs. Then come to Woodland Park for the annual Minister's Conference with speakers Andrew Womack, Bob Nichols, Bob Yandian, Kerry Pickett, Greg Moore, Dwayne Sheriff, and Jesse Duplantis. Lastly, in October, join us for the Women Arise Conference with speakers Kerry Pickett and Audrey Mack. Please note, Andrew will not be speaking at this event. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. You say, in the name of Jesus, I'm not going by what I see. I go by what the Word of God says. There's more than just this physical realm. There's also a spiritual realm. I don't care what this looks like. I know what God's Word says. I was told that I would always have severe asthma and food allergies. I was born missing the left side of my heart with a very small chance of living. The doctors indicated that I had a permanent brain injury and that I would never function in mainstream society again. I'm Tim McDermott, and my brother and I were told that we would never recover from autism. From a young age, I had several diagnoses, including Asperger's syndrome, disexecutive syndrome, and communication disorders. My brother James was diagnosed with autism before he turned three. For years, it seemed like we would never be normal. But then my parents stumbled across the healing journey of Hannah Terides. A few weeks later, we went to Andrew's free Grace and Faith Conference, where we were healed of autism. Today, 10 years later, I'm still walking in my complete healing, and I am not alone. I haven't needed my inhaler in years, and now I eat whatever I want. My heart grew back its missing piece, and the doctors cannot explain it. Today, I'm completely healed, and I get to teach God's truth about healing. Because people like you partnered with Andrew O'Mac Ministries, we have all been given our lives back. We cannot thank you enough for your generosity, but there are still millions of lives out there looking for the same truth that set us free. Will you help us bring this message to them? The word needs to get out to change people's lives. Please consider a partnership. Please partner with this ministry, it's amazing. Please consider being a partner with this ministry. You know, you may not know these people, but I know every one of these people that you just saw them give a testimony. And I tell you, Jesus changed their life because of our partners. If you've not yet joined with us and become a partner, I ask you to pray about it and join with us today. You know, social media has become a big thing in most people's lives, but sad to say, a lot of it is really negative. Well, we've got some positive social media. I would like to encourage you to check out our social media, all of these different platforms. We've got a lot of good news to share, so check it out, our social media for Andrew Womack Ministries. <music>